All right. So uh, before going any further, let's talk about some architectural components of the device, uh, which could be uh, very beneficial in the later part when we talk about the control plane and the data plane in the SDA. So if you segment the functionality of a device, we get a total of three architectural planes or we call them uh, planes of operation. You can segment the uh, functionalities of the device or you can segment the operations of the device into three categories. And each of these uh, three planes of operation, they have very specific and clearly defined objective. So one of the architectural plane that we get is something called control plane. Control plane of the device is the brain of the device itself. Like it consists of all the uh, control plane operations, all the uh, functionality that uh, the device performs such as routing. It consists of uh, like variety of protocols such as OSPF, ISIS, VGP. It is It runs the protocol such as uh, ICMP, ARP, IGMP and all these protocols. The control plane is basically responsible to maintain variety of tables such as it is responsible to maintain the routing table. It is responsible to maintain the ARP cache. It is responsible to maintain the STP database and everything. It is responsible to maintain uh, different different types of other tables that could be present on the device. Anything that goes towards the device, we can say that it is going towards the control plane of the device. Any operation that is CPU intensive operation or CPU centric operation, we can say that it is done by the control plane of the device itself. All the routing protocols that we have heard of, like for example, uh, let's say we have to exchange some route information between router 1 and router 2. So we run a uh, protocol such as OSPF. So OSPF messages get, uh, get exchanged, some uh, sort of adjacency is established, then the subnet information is exchanged and a routing table gets updated. So who is going to generate the OSPF messages? Who is going to send those OSPF messages? Who is going to maintain the routing table, keep the entries in the routing table? Uh, plus the entries from the routing table if the route gets invalid and everything. All that responsibility goes towards the control plane. So control plane of the device is basically the brain of the device itself. All the anything that goes towards the device will go towards the control plane. Okay. So in traditional cases, in traditional devices, there is a there is a you know there is a general purpose CPU. There is a general purpose CPU, which is responsible to manage all the control plane functions. All the control plane protocols run on that general purpose CPU. This happens in a centralized architectural platforms. Like in whatever devices we have a centralized uh, architectural platform, this general purpose CPU is responsible to do all those things. We, we do have some devices that follow distributed architectures. Okay, where the uh, we have something called in distributed architecture. In distributed architecture, we have something called uh, route processor, or we call them supervisor engine, which is responsible to do all this uh, uh, CPU intensive task, and all the protocols run under uh, like major protocols run under the, this route processor or supervisor engine. How some protocols run here and some protocols such as uh, such as ARP, such as uh, BFD, ICMP, uh, they are now sent to the line cards of the device. Not they don't run on the uh, centralized route processor engine, uh, but that is limited to the that is limited if your device has a distributed architecture. In your distributed architecture, we have supervisor engine, we have line cards. You you might see the distributed architecture in high end switches. But in a centralized architectural platforms like normal routers and switches, you will see there is a general purpose CPU which is going to manage all the control plane functions. Okay. Now, when it comes to the data plane, second operational plane, second architectural plane is something called data plane. Data plane is the actual point from where the data is transmitted from the device. So anything that goes through the device, anything that goes through the device is it is going to go from the data plane. Data plane is the plane that is responsible to do data forwarding. We call that forwarder forwarding plane as well. 
it is it is responsible to switch the packet from one interface to the other interface actually it handles things like encapsulation decapsulation all that thing it handles in the data plane there could be we can apply different different types of feature that could affect the forwarding behavior such as we can apply something called access control list such as we can apply quality of service applying the access control list or quality of service we can control what packets can pass what packets cannot pass with the help of the access control list and we can give some sort of preference to the devices or to the packets which are being passed through that particular device so the data plane data plane is the part of the device which handles actual data forwarding anything that goes through the device it goes through the data plane now when we talk about forwarding techniques uh, in older times we had something called process switching we had something called fast switching and nowadays we in cisco devices we have this thing called ceph cisco express forwarding what hap what used to happen in the process switching any time the data any time a packet arrives on the device in the data plane the packet will be sent towards the control plane control plane is going to do all the lookup and everything and then it is going to instruct the data plane that okay you have to forward the packet out of this interface and then the data plane is going to do necessary uh, encapsulation and forward the packet out of the interface so packet arrived on fa0 by 1 packet was punted packet was sent towards the control plane of the device in the control plane we have that variety of tables like routing table we have the arp cache and everything from there instructions were passed to the data plane and now the data plane is going to uh, switch the packet from one interface to the other interface based on the instructions that it has received this is this is what used to happen in 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 the process switching then they introduce something called fast switching in the fast switching what what is what the device does is that it is going to maintain some called some sort of cache memory so first time when the packet arrives it is process switched means the packet first packet will go towards the cpu from the cpu routing table arp cache lookup will happen and then the instructions will be passed to the data plane and the packet will be encapsulated and switched out of the appropriate interface but cpu is also going to maintain a shortcut entry in that cache so that if i send the same if 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 there are some subsequent packets if i am sending the packet to the same destination i don't have to send the packet towards the control plane again i can just refer to that shortcut entry and i can switch the packet from one interface to the other interface fine this is what we used to call as fast switching in first generation of multilayer switches in first gen of the multilayer switches we used to see this fast switching mechanism route cache based switches those were route ones switch mini later on this ceph technology cisco express forwarding technology was introduced this ceph technology is going to maintain two tables in the data plane one is called forwarding information base and one is called adjacency table so whenever the packet arrives packet is going to look up the fib table from the fib fib table is exact replica of routing table we call that routing information base in fact better uh, entries better replica of the routing table is is this fib so the entries will be checked in the forwarding information base table then from there the appropriate exit interface will be selected and then the packet will be placed out of the appropriate exit interface whatever encapsulation has to be done that information what mac address will be added as the source mac address the session mac address ether type and everything it is maintained in the adjacency table so even for the first packet the packet will not go towards the cpu and all that information like cache and this this these two tables are maintained in the data plane of the device so data plane is the part of the device which is responsible to do actual data forwarding and the third and the last uh, architectural plane that we have here third plane is what we call as the management plane now the management plane of the device is responsible to see how the device is being managed how we have taken the access of the device are we uh, connected to the device using console are we connected to the device using vty remote access or auxiliary as an how the device is being managed are we using any sort of snmp protocol 
are we transferring some files from the device have we used telnet ssh so the device management is the responsibility of management plane now there could be in band management out band management that is the other thing but a management plane is generally responsible to uh, manage the device through the connection to the network there could be different different protocols used for this task such as snmp ftp sftp ssh telnet all these protocols Cons you can connect console cable directly to the device you can connect the console cable to the auxiliary port of the device you can do the device management using different different uh, concepts different different lines that we have on the device line console line bty line auxiliary we can also use the protocol such as snmp to do basic device management okay now so these are three architectural planes we have this thing called control plane okay we have this thing called data plane and we have this thing called let's call that uh, you know management plane okay we have these three architectural planes of the device every architectural plane has its own set of responsibilities management plane is generally concerned with the device management how the user has taken the access of the device how the device is being managed data plane is responsible to do actual data forwarding so packet arrives and packet is going to exit out of the appropriate interface so what encapsulation will happen when the packet exists out of the interface what how the packet is going to be decapsulated and everything it will be handled by the data plane control plane is responsible to do everything uh, related to maintaining variety of tables which could be used in data forwarding process control plane controls the data plane control plane controls the data plane it tells the device how to forward the packet going towards a certain destinations now in a device all these things are within the device itself we could have centralized architecture we could have distributed architecture that is a different thing but if you talk about let's say we have three routers here and we have to configure some protocols on these three four routers we have to so why we have to configure the protocol so that these lan subnet information gets exchanged okay so what we have to do actually first of all i have to take the access i have to take the access of this device then i will run whatever protocol we are going to run such as maybe we, we want to run the ospf protocol to exchange the route and once the route gets exchanged then we can do the data forwarding we can do the ping trace that we want to do now once we are done doing this then I, I will disconnect the cable and then i will connect it again on router 2 i will do the same thing here then i will do on router 3 i will do the same thing then i will do on every device has its own set of control plane management plane and data plane that's what i'm saying i'm saying that every device has its own set of control plane management plane and data plane that is why every time you have to do some sort of configuration you have to take the access of these devices one by one it's not like you configure ospf here it will automatically exchange the route everywhere else like we don't need to configure ospf here. it's not like that we have to configure ospf on all the rest of the devices as well so we have to run some sort of control plane protocol uh, which is responsible to exchange the route information in between the devices in our case ospf and then finally the data forwarding will take place and also this device cannot forward the data by looking at the routing table of router number two router one can look its own local routing table and then it will do the data forwarding based on that it, it cannot refer to the routing table of router two router three or router four every device has its own set of control plane management plane and data plane and that is exactly where the problem exists what if the control plane goes down what if the control plane of the device goes down everything is on the same device what if the control plane of the device goes down what if i cannot take the management access of the particular device since this was some sort of centralized architecture like distributed architecture like everyone is having its own set of control distributed in that term that everyone is having its own set of control plane data plane and management plane whatever management related task we do on here it will not make any impact on here so when we introduced or when we use the software defined approach to manage the lan or wan devices what we generally do we separate these management plane control plane and data plane functionalities from the device for example 
if you talk about sd wan technology which is a technology to manage or all, all the wan edge devices in sd wan the control plane of your network is centralized with the help of a controller called v smart controller what they thought that if i have a distributed architecture where everyone is having its own set of control plane i have to configure the protocol on everywhere i have to troubleshoot why the protocol is not forming the resonances on everywhere so instead of having a distributed architecture they thought of having a centralized control plane so and they created a controller which is responsible to do all the control plane related task in your network everything that you can do related to the control plane can be done using this controller called v smart controller management plane when we talk about the management plane i want that all the devices i i should be able to access all these devices from a centralized point so that is now done with the help of something called v manage network management station this is also a controller in sd wan there is a controller called v manage nms and this v manage network management station is responsible to centralize all the management related task then we have the data plane all these devices all these routers all these routers like uh, viptela v stands for viptela so viptela operating system based as devices or cisco operating system based as devices routers typically these are just routers these are routers so all these routers they are just and just now the data plane devices they should know who is the management plane they should know who is the control plane of the network before they can be considered as fully functional so in sd wan they follow this centralized architecture where they have the control plane based on v smart they have the management plane based on v manage and they have the data plane on the s devices itself when we talk about the sd access the centralized we will not say centralized basically the control plane functionalities or control plane in sd access is based on a protocol called lisp locator identity separation protocol we'll talk about that as well we i'm not going to say centralized at the moment when we talk about lisp we'll understand what is lisp and how is it really centralized or we do still have like a decentralized control plane in the sda we'll talk about that since our focus was not on the sd wan so we talked at this point itself like uh, v smart is centralized controller v manage is a centralized controller similar to that we'll talk about the control plane based on lisp later on so in sd access the control plane functionality is our control plane is centralized using a protocol called lisp when it comes to the data plane data plane is based on something called vxlan virtual extensible local area network so we have a data plane based on vxlan you might already know vlan to overcome the issue of stretching the vlan from one switch to other switch we have this concept of vxlan we'll talk about that in a dedicated video as well and when it comes to the management plane all the management and everything is done from the dns center appliance itself dns center appliance is the hardware appliance that you have to purchase and install in your network and from there you can do all the all the management related tasks we do also have something called policy plane you know policy and everything uh, can be applied using ice ice acts as the, as the policy plane there is a specific service called px grid service we'll talk about that as well so a uh, policy plane uh, policies are insured with the help of ice in the sda web let's ignore the policy plane for a moment we have to understand that the control plane is based on lisp the data plane is based on vxlan and the management plane is based on dnac uh, basically like everything you can do from the dnac itself but the obviously the management can you can do from the centralized point dnac as well not only management you get a lot of other functionalities we we have already taken a look at the uh, gui of the dns center appliance and you already know what things it can do you have already taken a look at the v manage gui and you already know what it can do so this is what they did 
in the software defined networking to overcome the challenges of the distributed architecture in the network. They did not want that we had to configure the protocol such as OSPF on every devices one by one. We should have a centralized control plane for all the devices. They did not want that we should manage the uh, every device one by one. So they have the centralized V manage NMS from where we can do all the management. We should have secure data plane uh, from S device to S device as well. So that security is provided by something called IPsec. In SDA, the control plane is based on LISP locator identity separation protocol. Data plane is based on VXLAN. And the management plane is based on this hardware platform called TVAC. Okay, so this is the difference between the traditional devices, traditional network, and the software defined network in terms of architectural 